Hi there, Daily Gardeners. Jennifer Ebling here. I just want to give a quick shout out to the folks who have left a review for the show over on Podchaser during the month of April. I want to give a heartfelt thanks to Minnie Garrett, Valerie Tropical Gardener, Matthew Sartor, and at Bringer. Thank you so much for leaving a review for the show, especially during the month of April. You know, this month, all month long, Podchaser is willing to donate 25 cents for every time a podcast gets reviewed over on their website. And then when I reply to that review, they double that contribution to World Central Kitchen, which is the organization where chefs provide meals to people fleeing Ukraine. So Hats off to Podchaser for picking such a great cause. If you have a chance and can leave a review for The Daily Gardener over at podchaser.com, it's so easy to do and so much good can come from it. Today's episode is brought to you by The Daily Gardener Friday Newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about garden history and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is April 20th. Today in garden history, we celebrate the birthday of Pietro Aretino, the Italian writer, poet, and blackmailer. He was born on this day, April 20th in 1492. He once wrote, Let us love winter, for it is the spring of genius. And today we also celebrate the birthday of the French priest and botanist Charles Plumy, who was born on this day, April 20th in 1646. Charles served as the botanist to King Louis XIV of France, and he traveled many times to the New World, documenting both plant and animal species. And it was during his third expedition to the Greater Antilles that Charles discovered the Fuchsia trophylla on the Caribbean island of Hispaniola, or modern-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Charles named the Fuchsia plant after the 16th century German botanist Leonard Fuchs. And because of that naming, Charles is sometimes referred to as the father of the Fuchsia. Now, the fuchsia has colorful upside-down blossoms that hang from the stems, and this is how fuchsias get the common name ladies' eardrops. The drooping habit is also reflected in the Irish name for fuchsia, Deora Day, which translates to God's Tears. Now, in addition to the fuchsia, Charles named the begonia after Michel Begon, who was the governor of the French Antilles for three years. And in fact, this was a little bit of a quid pro quo, because it was Begon who recommended Charles to King Louis XIV for his position as plant collector in the Caribbean. And then the naming of the magnolia was in recognition of the great French botanist, Pierre Magnol, the botanist who introduced the concept of plant families. Now, Carl Linnaeus and his wife were both Charles Plumet fans. In fact, they used his artwork to make wallpaper for their home. Today, Charles is remembered in the genus Plumeria, a tropical plant. The Plumeria grows in shrubs and trees, and it's sometimes called by its common name, Frangipani. This is because an Italian marquee named Frangipani used Plumeria blossoms to create a perfume, and that perfume was used to scent gloves during the 16th century. And today we also celebrate the birthday of the Scottish nurseryman, plant hunter, and merchant Peter Barr, who was born on this day, April 20th in 1826. Peter is credited as the man who popularized the daffodil. In fact, in America, it was Peter's promotion of daffodils that inspired a daffodil craze here after the Civil War. Now, over his lifetime, Peter bred over 2 million daffodils in his Surrey nursery, and that earned him the moniker the Daffodil King. 
During his 70s, Peter gave the nursery to his sons so he could go out and travel the world in search of daffodils in both Asia and South America. And after seven years of searching, Peter finally retired. He went home to his native Scotland, and then once there, he pivoted away from daffodils and began cultivating primroses. In fact, two years before his death in 1909, Peter famously mused, I wonder who will plant my grave with primroses. And it was on this day, April 20th in 1849, that the Swiss poet and philosopher Henri Frédéric Amiel was finally back home, and he wrote these words in his journal. It is six years today since I last left Geneva. Three snowstorms this afternoon, poor blossoming plum trees and peach trees, What a difference from six years ago, when the cherry trees, adorned in their green spring dress and laden with their bridal flowers, smiled at my departure along the voudois fields, and the lilacs of burgundy threw great gusts of perfume into my face. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Flavors from the Garden, by William Weiss Weaver. This book came out in 2021, and the subtitle is Heirloom Vegetable Recipes from Roughwood. Well, of course, Roughwood is a reference to the Roughwood Seed Collection of Heirloom Food Plants that William maintains at the Historic Lamb Tavern in Devon, Pennsylvania. And William is an expert not only on gardening, but also food history. And he is a four-time winner of the prestigious Julia Child Cookbook Award. Now, what I first noticed about this book is the gorgeous cover, which features a simple yellow plate that has a marvelous tomato salad on it. And then that is set on an old table that has been painted and patinaed with a very light teal. And so it's a very captivating cover. And now what is really wonderful about anything that William does is that he is creating recipes that are really all about plants. And so in this book, you will find 80 seasonal recipes, everything from fresh salads and stir fries to soups and wonderful baked goods. Now, William has arranged this book to follow the seasons, so that's wonderful because you can just dive into the chapter that reflects the season that you're currently in, and then head on out to the garden, and then pick the produce that you're going to need to make these wonderful dishes that include things like saffron corn soup, there's a ramp pesto. So if you're looking to make a new pesto, wild harvest ramps are perfect for pesto, So keep that in mind if you have ramps growing wild near you or in your garden. And then there is a wonderful lemon pie. We could have used that at our Easter celebration this past weekend. And then there are 77 additional recipes. Now, two things I always think of when I see a book by William Weiss Reaver is heirloom gardening, so heirloom vegetables and herbs. And you'll find both of those featured in this cookbook. This book is 208 pages of 80 recipes that take vegetables from the garden to the kitchen and to your table. You can get a copy of Flavors from the Garden by William Weiss Weaver and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $24. Finally, we end today's show with a celebration of the birthday of the American botanist, artist, and naturalist who was also known as the flower hunter, William Bartram. He was born on this day, April 20th in 1739. The son of the Quaker botanist John Bartram, William, or Billy, as he was known to his family, was the first American to pursue a life devoted to the study of nature. 
Now, in his heart, William was more of an artist, and his nature art ended up becoming widely acclaimed. But before all of that, his father John was worried that his son Billy would end up as a starving artist. And so he attempted many times to steer William toward other more lucrative endeavors. But ultimately, John came around and he recognized William's talent, and he and William went on their final adventure together in Florida. And so, while John collected the plant specimens, William sketched and wrote. And it was during this trip that John and William came upon a unique tree, a tree that John named the Franklin tree, after his dear friend, Benjamin Franklin. Now, the botanical name for the tree is Franklinia alatamaha, and if you're working with student gardeners, this is a fun one to teach them. Just break it down for them into smaller parts, alatamaha, and then put that together, Franklinia alatamaha. Well, this particular discovery became a bit of a legacy for William Bartram because he returned to the spot later in life where his father and he had discovered this tree. And what he did, thank goodness, is that he collected seeds for propagation. Of course, at the time, he had no idea how important that would be, but by the turn of the century, in 1803, the Franklin tree had gone extinct in the wild. And so, all of the Franklin trees that are cultivated and prized in gardens and herbariums today are descended from those seeds that William Bartram collected and cultivated over 200 years ago. And here's a little botanical fun fact. William Bartram was also the first person to describe and name the oak leaf hydrangea, the hydrangea corsifolia. After his trip with his father, William returned to Florida to farm. This was another career move that worried his dad, John. But in 1791, William's book, Travels, was published. And this book told of his 2,400-mile exploration of the American South. And Travels became an immediate sensation in Europe, where people were over the moon curious about the flora and fauna of the New World. So it was a great success for William Bartram. Finally, in B.J. Healy's book, The Plant Hunters, there is a charming summation of William's story, and it goes like this. Through his book Travels, one of the earliest and certainly the most finest record of American experience, landscape, and people in the 18th century, a book that achieved worldwide recognition and profoundly influenced Wordsworth, Coleridge, and many later writers, William more than proved himself a worthy son of the old Quaker pioneer. John Bartram need not have been troubled in his later years. He would have been proud of Billy in the end. Well, that's it for today's show. Just a reminder that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. The next time you're over at Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. And if you'd like more of The Daily Gardener, you can subscribe to the newsletter over at thedailygardener.org. And don't forget that you can also show your support for the show by using the Buy Me a Coffee link over at the website or in today's show notes. This is Jennifer Ebling. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day.